Thank you. Well, our next presenta uh, presenter is Dolores Larson. Um, she was born in Dillingham and raised in Kalignic. Uh Dolores is a wife and a mother of three. Uh, she, subsistence, uh, she lives a subsistence way of life and works to protect her lifestyle from large scale development in the Bristol Bay region. She'll be presenting on permanent protections uh, needed for Bristol Bay. Thank you, Dolores. To my hello, and thank you all for being here today. Um, I'd like to introduce myself. My Yupik name is Mayok. I am the daughter of Herman and Elena Johnson. I was born in Dillingham and raised in the native village of Kluginik. I am a lifelong subsistence user, hunter, gatherer, and fisher woman. Professionally, I am the Community Engagement Director for United Tribes of Bristol Bay. And today I'll be presenting on the fight to protect Bristol Bay. Next slide, slide please. Before I get into my presentation, I'd, I'd just like to give you a sense of who we are and what we do. United Tribes of Bristol Bay was founded in 2013 by the tribes in the region who recognized a need for a united voice for our region and people. UTBB works to protect the Yupik, Dina, and Anilutic traditional ways of life, in <clears throat> particularly from large scale development projects like the Pebble Mine. We represent 15 tribal governments in Bristol Bay, which is about 80% of the region's population. UTBB is a tribally chartered consortium, which is not a nonprofit, but rather a political subdivision of our member tribes, which um, really gives us the ability to be very effective advocates for our region and people. Next slide, please. Um, before I get into the meat and potatoes of my presentation, I, I think it's very important to understand how we got to where we are today. I've highlighted a few major events over the past couple years. <clears throat> um, Bristol Bay ce celebrated a huge milestone when the Army Corps of Engineers, the lead federal agency responsible for uh, the permit review, denied Pebbles key federal uh, permit to mine in Bristol Bay. The, the Corps rightfully determined that the project was not in the public interest and Pebbles plan for the discharge and fill material did not comply with the Clean Water Act. This was a huge testament to all the work that had been done to stop Pebble and protect Bristol Bay. <clears throat> and even though Pebble got a clear no from federal regulators, there they're not backing down and they continue to push their to toxic project forward. They filed an appeal of the permit denial that is still currently under review. Another major event I'd like to highlight is Abe Williams reject rejection to the State Board of Fisheries. Governor Dunleavy uh, appointed Abe Williams who is the director of uh, regional affairs for the Pebble Limited Partnership to the Board of Fisheries in 2020. His appointment was widely opposed with nearly thousand Alaskans submitting testimo testimony in opposition to William's appointment, sending a clear message that a Pebble employee is not trusted to regulate the state Fisheries Management Management Board. In more positive news, last summer Bristol Bay saw one of the largest sockeye salmon returns in recorded history, with more than 66 million salmon returning to the bay. While other fisheries are in the state are struggling, Bristol Bay continues to produce one of the largest fisheries in the world. And, and with um, 
an even larger return expected this coming summer. <clears throat> Bristol Bay celebrated another huge milestone last summer when the Ninth, Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals reversed the Trump administration's decision to illegally withdraw the 2014 proposed determination and remanded the action back to the EPA to resume the process. And in January, the EPA sent a 15-day letter which officially restarts the Section 44C process in Bristol Bay and to hopefully finalize those protections for good. Next slide, please. So we, we've been in this fight for nearly 20 years now, and we've gone through many processes. We've gone through the NEPA permitting process, and, and now we're, we're back to the um, EPA process, the EPA Section 44C veto process in Bristol Bay. I, I'd like to briefly go, go through the history in, in this figure. <clears throat> Let me zoom in a little bit so I can see better. Um, so this all began, I'm sorry. I'm trying to view this to fit my window so I can see the, the slide better. Um, let's see, I don't know why that's not working. Anyways, um, so in, in May 2020 or 2010, the Bristol Bay tribes um, petitioned the EPA and um, to use Section 404C of the Clean Water Act to stop mines like Pebble in, in, in our watershed. <clears throat> the um, EPA began a multi-year assessment known as the Bristol Bay Watershed Assessment um, of the impacts of mining in the region um, and found that uh, the Pebble Mine um, proposal of any size would cause unacceptable harm to Bristol Bay and they issued, the EPA issued the uh, 44C um, proposed determination, um, which are proposed protections basically uh, um, for restricting or safeguarding our watershed from um, dredge and fill material. Um, so in, 2019, um, you know, during that time, the tr Trump was elected and I mean, well before that, but the Trump administration illegally withdrew the 2014 proposed determination and um, immediate, immediate, immediately after the Bristol Bay tribes sued and our allies sued the EPA. Um, and so last, uh, last October, um, the, the EPA or the federal court, sorry, the federal court reinstates the four, 2014 uh, 404C de proposed determination and um, it reinitiated the 404C process. And, and now, um, you know, those, protections are back on the table. Um, so what comes next after EPA's uh, recent announcement? Um, and this is all uh, what is to be expected um, because EPA has to go through a formal process and um, stick to a, a, a timeline, I should say. Um, in the first process, 
uh, EP will be um, looking at the, the review um, of all the, they, they're taking all the data that was compiled during the NEPA process. And, and so they're revising that and we'll be coming out with the, um, the revised proposed determination um, this, uh, which is expected by May, this coming May, 2022. And then shortly after that, um, we expect uh, a public comment period on those revised protections. Um, and then, um, the four first this next fall, uh, the EPA will re release the a recommended determination, um, and you know during that time they can either um, withdraw those protections or or they can finalize them. And we hope um, they will finalize those protections. And that concludes the last step. Um, yeah, I'd like to go, go to the next slide, please. So we want to, we really want to reiterate you know, why, why there's a need for 404C four, four uh, protections in Bristol Bay. Um, you know, while, you know, Pebbles permit was very welcome news, we, we know all too well that, you know, the fight to protect our region from mining is far from over until we can secure permit protections. Um, a permit denial does not stop Pebble from reapplying or another mining company um, buying out those claims and uh, submitting another proposal in the future. <clears throat> so um, Bristol Bay supports um, you know, or is home to the Yupik, Dena Ena, and Aluti people that have depended, depended on our watershed for thousands and thousands of years. Um, the mine puts away our way of life at risk. <clears throat> Bristol Bay supports um, one of the largest uh, salmon for fisheries in the world. It produces 15,000 American jobs. Um, and it's just, it, it's, it's very <laughs> worth, worth protecting. Um, it's basically uh, an economic powerhouse for a region and supports 60% of the world's uh, wild sockeye salmon harvest and um, a $2.2 billion annual commercial, commercial fishery. Next slide, please. So <clears throat> this here, um, is it this, this QR code takes you to our website. Um, and we, we ask you to please, please stand with us. Please continue to support us. Please um, make your voices heard and sign a letter to the EPA, encouraging them to uh, finalize protections for Bristol Bay so we can finally put this project to rest. And, um, you know, 
stay involved, stay engaged with 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 us with us during this fight. And um, we also have a, a a listserv on our website that um, we encourage you to sign up for um, to stay up to date and you know just support please support our work sign <laughs> sign the letter um it's just um really important to have your voices to continue to have your voice heard in this fight <clears throat> next slide so I just wanted to put up our um, our web shop on on here, just so in case you're interested in buying our um, our gear, um, the, any and all uh, purchases go to go towards the work to support Bristol Bay. It also um, just shows shows your support. So feel free to take a look at our shop online. Next slide, please. I just wanted to take a minute to thank you for your time and um, remind you it's because of you, that because of your continued support um, that, that, um, have kept the Pebble project from being developed. And, you know, with, with your continued support, um, we'll continue to fight this. Well, until we can hopefully see, you know, per permit protections for our region and our people. Next slide. So, oh, sorry, this is, this is our last slide, um, or my last slide. Uh, I'll, I'll just encourage you to follow us on sh social media um, for the latest updates and ways to help. And feel free to contact us, um, reach out to us uh, if you, you know, have any questions or concerns or um, would like to continue to support our work. Thank you, and I'd like to open it up for any questions or comments um, that you may have. Hi, I, if there wasn't any questions. Hi, Dolores, good to see you. Um, glad that you're able to give that important presentation. And I know that we've been fighting this fight for a, a number of years. And thank you for bringing the information um, to the people attending the summit this year. Um, just so everybody doesn't just to introduce myself, my name is Gayla Hassett. I'm the second chief of Chuggan Tribal Council located in Dillingham, Alaska in Bristol Bay, downriver from where the proposed um, Pebble Mine site, um, it, what Dolores was talking about. I'm also the director of natural resources for Bristol Bay Native Association and serve on the National Tribal Caucus um, for EP, with, with EPA. Um, and then also as a part of our talk here. But I just wanted to give some important information. We just got out of the National Tribal Caucus information in our, our monthly meeting. And, um, you know, as we go through this process of a revised proposed, de proposed determination or recommended proposed determination, it's really important for people on the line um, to, um, to request tribal consultation, especially right now, because the decision is going to be made in May as to what, what the next steps are going to be. And through this process, um, I requested that we have a formal webinar, another webinar. I know there was a webinar that recently happened and there was minimal participation. So I'm gonna be doing outreach and education of trying to get this webinar formed um, in time to, for, for, for tribes to engage in that important tribal consultation. So if you're a member of a tribe, please talk to your tribal, con your tribal councils and request that tribal consultation. It's very, very important to have meaningful um, government to government consultation on this issue to help weigh in on the decisions that are going to be made. So thank you very much. I just wanted to add that um, news flash of new information that we just found out. So I will be doing outreach. I'll be working with Dolores and United Tribes of Bristol Bay and then also 
you know, throughout the state of Alaska and even the tribes that are on here from Washington, Oregon, and Idaho to even um, to engage in this process. We're all connected and we're all connected, you know, through our salmon. Salmon is a really important part of our life and we are salmon people. And um, if this, you know, mine were to get permitted and for it to happen, it would be devastating to the entire world. So we have record numbers of fish returning to the river um, this summer returning to the rivers to Bristol Bay this summer, um, which that's the only thing that has changed is more and more fish are coming back. I don't know if Dolores had a chance to, I just came from another meeting, so I just wanted to quickly get on here, but you know, we're having record numbers of fish return to our rivers and streams as we're seeing, you know, declines of salmon from our neighboring, um, neighboring villages around us. And it's just heartfelt. It's, this is an emotional subject for all of us to, to go through. And so we just thank you for your support. We thank you for the continued engagement and we look forward to seeing you guys participate on the webinars. Thank you. Oh, and Lee Wan is coming up here next. Uh, hello, thank you. Yeah, uh, uh, my name is Lee Wan Tyler with Shoshone Bannock Tribes, Fort Hall, Idaho, <clears throat> Southeastern Idaho. And, uh, yeah, what Gayla was saying. Uh, I know uh, I was studying a little bit about it. The Bristol Bay, we talked about it. We brought in to attention with the National Tribal Caucus to uh, to uh, implement the 404 up there back when, when the Obama was there. And then all of a sudden, uh, the next administration flipped it around. So all that stuff's going on. And I was looking at uh, this uh, script on uh, the news channel. And the beautiful place it is. There's people on a, a boat and they're drinking fresh water. And then uh, they're trying to destroy that. And uh, so basically, that's the last of the salmon runs. You know, Lower 48, where I'm from, they're, they're, we're trying to breach four dams in, in, uh, in the Snake River. And we're, we're only getting like two, 200,000 salmon, Chinook and Steelhead, and for the, this year, the brood stock. And it's really sad because we don't want that up there, the, the pristine area of Bristol Bay to be like that. You know, there's so many areas down there, the, the Hell's Canyon complex wiped out five different um, river basins so that they used to spawn. So we, we're, then we're always testifying, hey, let them come, though. they come to the estuary of the mouth of Columbia and everybody feeds on them, the orca. We said, let them make it down to the areas of the spawning grounds. They don't make it, very few. So it's a sad situation where we're at. And the 1872 mining law is one of the causes of this up there too. So how, how do we, will we fight the giant? And I know I've seen where some of those guys, I think they're called Destiny, what's it? No, some kind of Destiny, the copper mining company, Northern Destiny. Yeah, Nor Northern Dynasty. And then they're, they're paying people, trying to divide people. They were paying one group of indigenous people up there and they showed them on there, giving them money because they were, they, were, they were in dire need of help and they need help. So they, they seen that vulnerability and then using them, pitting tribes against tribes. There's so much issues going on. So. I appreciate your uh, presentation. We got to tell in, but uh, we, we need to support each other. And our salmon down there, we don't want Alaska to end up like down where we're at. So thank you very much.